This is Echo 3, and let's discuss helicopters. There are many different configurations of helicopters that work, such as the main rotor, tail rotor design, shown here. Tandem rotors, like the CH-47 Chinook, intermeshing rotors, like the HH-43 Husky, traverse rotors, like the Focke-Wulf FW-61, and quadcopters. This tutorial will focus on coaxial rotors, as I think they are a good style for beginners. In the space plane hangar, I will start by placing a Mark II lander can in the rover variant. I am using the I-beams to create a tail boom, although this will add more weight on the back end than I would like. I will be basing this design off of the Kamov KA-32. I am placing a small wing on the tail boom to aid in aerodynamic stability. It can be a little tricky to make sure this piece is centered. The Elevon 1 will aid in controlling pitch. Next, I'm going to place a couple Elevon 4s to act as winglets, and a couple more set to control yaw. During testing, this craft was stable enough to be flown without SAS, and without the lander can's reaction wheels. It was remarkably stable and rather fun to fly this little helicopter in testing. After placing the aerodynamic control surfaces, let's move forward on the craft and begin working on the rotors. This is where the finer points of helicopters will be discussed. For aesthetic reasons, I am using the FLA-10 adapter, but the cubic octagonal strut is crucial for this design. So, I am offsetting it above the craft to more easily work with it. On the strut's top node, I attach the EM-16 light duty rotor. I have reduced the motor size to just 25%. This will reduce weight and electrical usage. By default, the rotors are bound to the brakes action group, but I don't want that for this craft. I like to bind the motor's power to the RCS action group. Then, on the bottom of the strut, I attach another EM16 light duty rotor. By placing them on the strut like this, I am assured that they will be perfectly aligned. I am placing the Cal 1000 on this helicopter but its usage and settings will be discussed later on in this tutorial. I am using the three-way symmetry for the rotors, as six total blades will provide ample lift for this little helicopter. I have set the top rotor to counterclockwise and the bottom rotor to clockwise rotation, and I put the blades on respectively. I am testing the blades to see that I have the deployment angles set correctly and so that I will know where to put them when I set up the Cal 1000. I am doing something a little different. I am going to tilt the rotors forward 15 degrees. This will result in a natural forward thrust when the cockpit is level. This is not a necessary step, but it can help make piloting a little easier. After I set that up, I clip the strut back down so it can't be seen and I begin working on the landing gear. I am careful when I place my landing gear to ensure that they are on square with the aircraft. And because the rotors are not bound to the brakes action group, I can use that for the landing gear, which will help keep the craft from rolling around when it is on the ground. You will see me make some adjustments to the landing gear as I adjust their springs and dampening. I have tested this craft out already and have found some ideal settings for the landing gear. When you make your own, you have to do your own testing. For this craft, power is crucial because it is an electric helicopter. I am placing four RTGs for the craft. They will end up being more powerful than needed, but if the engine were a little bit bigger, it would use all the electric power that these provide and probably drain the batteries rather quickly. 
I am checking the center of mass. The tail configuration has made the craft back heavy, and I am compensating for that with ore tanks. That's right, I just fixed my center of mass with rocks. This isn't rocket science. Now, I am fine tuning the placement of the rotor assembly so that it is almost in line with the center of mass. Ideally, the thrust generated by the motors will be very slightly behind the center of mass. The final step is to set up the Cow 1000. If you have seen either of my fixed wing propeller tutorials, you will notice that I am using the same method. The Cow 1000 play position is bound to the throttle, and the rotor deploy angle is bound to the cow. I am setting the deployment range from 0 to 12, then copy and paste from one set to the other. And this whirly burl is ready for testing. Let's give this guy a little test around the Kerbal Space Center. Take off as quick and easy as these rotors provide plenty of lift. The controls seem rather nimble and easy to use. For part of this flight, I turned off the reaction wheels in the lander can itself and was surprised at how easy this craft was still able to fly. For other times, I did leave them on and found it just a little easier to fly with the reaction wheels. Look at that, smooth as butter. Okay, not quite. Uh, my helicopter piloting needs a little bit of skill. I think for this last flight, I'll let Jeb fly. This flight is entirely from his perspective. He is flying a bigger, liquid-fueled version of the helicopter that I built for the tutorial. Jeb reported that this KA-32 Kerr is very stable and easy to fly. Take that for what it's worth, as Jeb would enjoy flying a command chair set upon Separaton boosters. But his skill with this helicopter is noteworthy. The craft seems very stable, and yet is able to respond quickly to Jebediah's control input. The Kerbal Space Center seems so peaceful right now. That's probably because nothing has blown up recently, and all of the wreckage has finally been cleaned up. But I shall savor this moment while it lasts. Bob has heard that the Space Center will be receiving an upgrade sometime late next year. He is curious as to what improvements will be made. Jeb has also heard the rumors. He even heard they are adding some new experimental technologies for him to test out. That part excites him the most. Jeb is curious if you have any helicopter flying tips you'd like to share or what you are looking forward to with the upgrades coming to the Kerbal Space Center. Well, this flight is coming to conclusion. I'm glad you could join this discussion on Let's Discuss Helicopters.